Hey there, Ben Sykes. I'm a microbial ecologist that studies fungi. A lot of what I do is trying to figure out how the environment changes, which microbes live where, and then oftentimes what those changes in the microbial communities mean to the function of the ecosystems. So I've got a few things here that I just wanted to show you, and um, you can check it out, and then we'll see what we can do with them back in the lab. So here's a fungus that we find out in the field often, especially around this time of year. These guys are eating logs, so let me see if I can show you here. I'm here. A few more here. As you can see from these, they don't have a, a stem like some mushrooms do. These are Gasteromycetes cousins to puffballs. In fact, if we open them up, we'll see all the spores. All the spores that are hidden inside the pocket. Yeah. You can see here the huge numbers that'll fruit. This is called the fruiting body of the fungus. It's kind of like the flower of a plant. This is the reproductive structure and where they spread their seeds that we call spores from. You can see that they're really all over inside the log. All along it. None with stems. Here you can see one broken open. These different kinds of fungi live in our environment, just like the ones that live on us in our homes, many of which are probably not bad, but are. some of them are involved in decomposition, like this one, and breaking down wood. Maybe that's breaking down your, your linen at home or your carpet or maybe even a log. Maybe it's just floating around, and it's instead of being a decomposer, it, it might be in a mutualistic relationship and mutually beneficial to the things it's associating with. But... There's many out here in the forest, and without the decomposers, all those nutrients would get locked up in leaves, and they would never be able to grow the new plants and trees. So here's another friend you're likely to see in the forest in the wintertime. This is a shell fungus. They're hard. This one's decomposing the tree. You can see a few on different trees nearby here. If you look on the underside, you'll see it has a cool layer of pores. It doesn't have gills like some of the mushrooms that you might have seen, like the ones you buy in the grocery store. This one is called Ganoderma aplanatum, just a Latin name. The common name is usually called artist conch fungi. These shell fungi, you can write on them, although I don't encourage you to. You kind of make a mark, and you can see the mark. Some people used to try and write on them. So there's a few different kinds of ways that fungi break down wood and leaf material in the forest. One of them we see here, these are called brown rots. They often make geometric type shapes and break off in such a fashion. Pretty good at breaking down wood, but they're not great at getting the lignin. That's what the brown is that's left. Lignin is the compound that gives trees their strength. Those kinds of fungi can break down cellulose and hemicellulose. Here we see some soft rots. They make the wood punky, spongy, a little bit. Not that much here. A little bit of brown rot, maybe even some white rot going on there. But this is the body of the fungus that you'll see there. This is a mycelium. You'll see it's just a thread, right? This is actually hundreds of them strung together. You can see that thread. Those are run throughout the wood. You can see some there. You've probably seen them before. Those threads are ultimately connected to, this is an old one, but the these are modified mycelia or hyphae. These are the threads that are turned into essentially the flower of the fungus. It's a shell fungus like uh, the artist conch we saw before, but it's it's quite different. It doesn't have the same kind of underside, and it's, of course, not that closely related to it, even though it looks a lot alike. But this is the, the mycelium turned into the flower, essentially the re reproductive structure for the fungus. But the main body of the fungus are those threads. In this case, the threads that are eating the wood. Yeah, this whole tree. In fact, the threads run all through the ground. 
not through Poppy, <laughs> but all through here as well. And are recycling this tree and these leaves into nutrients that can then be taken up by these trees. And in fact, these trees have specialized fungi that live on their roots that instead of breaking down old leaf litter and stuff, help the tree to take up nutrients from the soil. And those are called mycorrhizal fungi. Hey, so we're back from our trip in the woods and I brought one of these puffballs, these gisteromycetes, brought a few of them back with me. These are called peach puffballs. They're the ones that we saw all over the log. Here they are digesting the wood. You can see the brown rot that we talked about in the woods. So here's one here that's opened. Now we're gonna get to take a little bit closer look with this microscope. I'm just doing this at home because of COVID. Uh, you guys can do it too. And this connects with what some of the people with microbes on the move have done with their USB microscope. And so here's a few of the the different ones. All I'm gonna do is open a few of them up. And we'll have a closer look at what's going on inside. And behind this one, you can see some of those mycelium that we saw out in the woods. Remember that I told you that those were connected to the fruiting bodies. Well, here it still has some of those mycelium connected to it. So we'll have a closer look at those. As we look through the microscope, we can start to see some key features of this puffball. First, we can see the outside here, which is covered in little patches. As we start to break it open, we can see that the inside is filled with kind of a greenish brown substance. This stuff inside has a special name called the gleba. And as we zoom in on it, we can start to see that really what it's made up of is a huge number of different hyphae. These are the body of the fungus, and as we set out in the field, this is a modified version of the same things that are running through the wood and eating it. Attached to the base, we can see the mycelium, very similar to the mycelium that we saw out in the field. And remember that that mycelium, that special name, is really just a tangle of lots and lots of very fine threads. With our microscope, we can zoom in, and as we do, see these finer and finer threads that are all wrapped together to create the mycelium that runs through the wood and also is modified to turn into this fruiting body of the puffball.